Hi, welcome to another video. So, OpenAI has upgraded Codex, their CLI agent, by a lot, and I really mean a lot. It is now way better, works with your chat GPT subscription, has GPT-5, and it now also comes with a VS Code extension. So, let's talk about all the new stuff that you get here, and how you can hook it up with DeepSeek, or any AI model. First of all, Codex is now way better in the terminal. It has been ported to Rust, making it extremely fast when you use it in the terminal. Plus, you can now use it with your ChatGPT membership, and it does not require you to use it via an API, which also makes it an alternative to Claude Code with the Mac subscription. The only issue is that the limits are unclear, like after how many tokens or requests you hit the rate limit. They have said that they will provide more clarity soon, but as of now, they say that it's dynamic. So, if more people are using it, then the limits will be lower. But with lower usage, you will get higher limits. So, that is kind of finicky at this point. The $200 plan will mostly get you unlimited access. So, there's that. But having this in the Plus subscription is great nonetheless. It allows you to select between GPT-5 High, Medium, Low, and everything in between. These models work extremely well with Codex, and it comes built in with GPT-5 Medium as the default model. But you can change it with the Slash Models option. Anyway now, the major new feature is the Codex VS Code extension which makes Codex something similar to Klein or Rue or stuff like that. This VS Code extension is available there with the name Codex by OpenAI. So, you can install it and then use it. This is what it looks like. This is actually just an extension over the Codex CLI. So, the stuff that you have there, like MCPs and such, will be ported over here as well. And you can also use this with any other API provider or model as well, which I'll show you how to do in a bit. But if we look at it as is, then at the bottom, you have the prompt box. In this box, you also have some options, like the ability to add manual context. And you can also enable whether you want to give context about which files you have open in the editor and such. Apart from this, you also have some more options. Like, if you wanted to use the Codex CLI, then you'll select the local option. Otherwise, if you want to delegate the task to the Cloud Codex, then you can also do that right from here using the Run in Cloud option. This will automatically detect the GitHub repo and then spawn a task on the cloud. You will also see it progress here, but you can also just leave it and then close it and it will still progress. Now, there are three modes. There's the chat, agent, and agent full access options. I think that the mode options here are kind of misleading, because chat does the same thing as agent, but it doesn't auto-approve and will require approval for each edit, which is kind of normal behavior. While the agent mode will auto-approve all the stuff, and the agent full access will also auto-approve and also allow it to access files outside the workspace. The names are kind of misleading, and it should have been just one chat option with the auto-approve and full access toggles. So, I don't know why they did a drop-down. Anyway, you can also set the reasoning effort here between high, low, medium, and minimal if you want that. You can also see the recent chats here, along with some options at the top, which are New Task, Task History, and Settings. In Settings, you can see the MCP option, where you can configure that. You also have the Advanced Settings, which will open up the settings where you can change the path of Codex, along with the config file for Codex. And you can also change the base URL for Codex here as well. Actually, if you're looking closely, then there's something from another company 
that does something very similar to what this extension is trying to do, and that's Gemini Code Assist. Gemini Code Assist's agent mode actually just uses Gemini CLI in the background, and it seems that OpenAI has taken inspiration from there. Anyway, I thought that was interesting to share. Now, let's ask it to do something as well. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-4.0, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. All in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. I have my repo open here, and I'm going to ask it to add a label of the model name beside each point in the price to performance chart here. So, let's just go ahead and write down the prompt here to do that. Once you type it in, you'll see that it starts to work. It shows simple bullet point kind of things, which I kind of like. It looks different and doesn't clutter the UI as much. It also shows the files that are edited and everything, similar to Gemini Code Assist, which also shows the edited files list like this. And Zed and Windsurf also do something similar. Anyway, in a bit, it gets done. And if I run this, then it shows up fine. It is a bit more finicky as it sometimes overlaps. But still, it's kind of okay and on par with what I'd get with Claude in the first generation. I think that GPT-5 and Codex gel amazingly well together. And they have optimized their tool calls and system prompts in order to make GPT-5 actually usable here. GPT-5 isn't usable in Rue or Klein for me but Codex is another story. I think that the $20 plan of ChatGPT with Codex is an amazing value. I can't comment on the $200 plan, but I think that the $20 plan is an amazing value with ChatGPT because you obviously get ChatGPT, deep research, cloud-based Codex, agent mode, and now Codex, and the limits here are quite better than Cursor. So, I would definitely recommend you to give this a try. It's really very cool for sure. This extension is also very snappy, way snappier than Roo or similar stuff. Probably because it doesn't literally have even 1% of the features that Roo provides, but having a snappier option is always a plus. Anyway, you can also use it with other models with some changes if you do wish to do that even DeepSeek. So, to do that, you'll need to go to the Codex config file and then set up the API provider and model that you want to use, which will be requesty in this case, but it can be anything you want. I have DeepSeek v3, one set up here, but you can have it be anything. Also, change the requesty parts to open rotor or whatever in this config and you should be able to follow along. Now, the issue is that Codex doesn't allow you to set up the API key in the config file. So, you always have to set it up in the environment variable. But you can't really do that in VS Code. However, there's one way. And for that, you just need to set the API key in your terminal and then launch VS Code from there. And boom, the API key will now be set up in Codex's VS Code extension as well. Now, you just need to go to the Codex settings and then open the settings JSON file from there. Then add a config element called ChatGPT model and enter the model name, and you should be fully good to go. DeepSeek works amazingly well with it, and the memory footprint is awesomely low. With RuCode, I'm at about 3 gigabytes of RAM with just idle RuCode open, 
whereas this is just close to one gigabyte, which is kind of awesome. And it also feels really fast and actually works amazingly well. So I've actually been using this with DeepSeek, and you can use it too in the same manner. It actually works surprisingly well. So I've been using DeepSeek and Codex now, and I'll keep using them and see how well they keep performing. You can also go ahead and give this a try. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.